Years ago, when I wrote my first book called Work in the Human Spirit, I sort of came out of the closet with my clients that this is what I was really about, um, and I held my breath. <clears throat> um, people would say to me, oh, John, this is so great. You're bringing spirit to the workplace, you know. And I'd say, no, not at all. Spirit is already in the workplace. It's just not being nurtured. It's not being acknowledged. It's not being uh, utilized, if you want to get mechanical about it. Uh, so from my point of view, my role is to help leaders uh, awaken or unleash the spirit and then channel it in ways that are meaningful, that create meaning for the person and uh, results for the organization. Why don't leaders who believe in something, why don't they operate that way when they go to work? And I like to think of it as... Um, what is it in an organization that trumps everything? It's what everybody navigates off of. And I don't think until, until we have led an organization with a board of, with a supervisory board and shareholders and the pressures of the, I don't think we can even begin to understand the pressures on a senior leadership team to produce numbers on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis. So that trumps everything. So unless they can see a benefit, a direct benefit, short-term direct benefit between what we're between those values and their immediate quarterly results, it's not going to happen. Because the, for almost all companies, the quarterly results trump everything. So that's why they don't do it. Uh, they believe in it. They, would, they, they can talk about it. They have the signs on the wall. But when push comes to shove, they're going to go with what, what creates short-term. Uh, now, it, it's not a bad thing. It's a human thing. So how do, we, how, how do we work on a large-scale basis to transform not just the mindset of those leaders, but to give them the courage to push back against the supervisory board or against the shareholders and say, you want this to be a profitable company? This is how we're going to do it. It's a wake-up call for executives who have been I will say in a trance, this is what happens to leaders. They get so fixated on their monthly uh, goals that they basically crash and burn because that's not, that's not all that it takes. Quite often, the people at the top realize that we have to flatten the organization. The people at the bottom are, are ready. They've been ready for a long time to have more authority, autonomy, more empowerment. The people in the middle are stuck. They're the guardians of the old paradigm. They have been promoted for years because they were really good at the old, at the old system, the old paradigm. So they don't even realize this, but they are actually fighting for the old paradigm. So the, the, the place to focus the effort in anything, flattening the organization, just being one change, is in the middle. How do we get the people in the middle to see the value of it, not just for the company, but for themselves as well. There's this whole thing of the triple bottom line, people, profits, and the planet. And when you look at the people dimension of the triple bottom line, what does that mean? And the untapped potential in that is the untapped potential in human beings. People learned to leave their, their self, leave their spirit, leave pretty much everything that's important about them at home. And they just go to work like they, they take their body to drag their, and, and work is something to be tolerated and survive. So here I come along, you know, six years ago, talking about bringing your whole self to the workplace and having the workplace become a, a dojo a, where you practice a school, where you practice being who you are, and it's just a, it's a, it's a mind-blowing thing for people. So being in that situation, for the, living there for the last four years, has sharpened my awareness of, what it, of, of how difficult that is and how it's not just the most natural thing in the world. But the very best human resource departments are interested in the human spirit. How do we, how do we release it? How do we unleash it? How do we tap it? Because people have what's known as discretionary effort. They have a lot. They don't, they don't bring everything. You know, when they go to work, they, 
a lot of people, we ask them what percentage of your capacity are you using on the job, 25, 30. My God, you could triple the size of your company and productivity without hiring anybody just by releasing that additional 50, 60, 75%. Well, how do you do that? 